You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 16th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, your Midwest home for presidential harassment, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Your snow covered Midwest yeah. home for presidential Man. harassment. Man, we had fall for a day. We had fall for, uh, yeah, maybe three or four glorious days yes. of beautiful foliage. Yes. And then it all fell at once. And we we're like, white. we should break this shit. Ah, wait till tomorrow. And then we woke up and there's a foot of snow on the ground. Oh, well. <laughs> there's a foot of snow on the ground. Wow. You don't have to rake no. when it's snowing. That's nature, honey. That's not me. That's I'm not being nature. lazy. That's nature. <laughs> and then she hands me the snow shovel. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh yeah. You know what? I should rake. I really should rake. No. We're very, we're very grateful to live in a place where there's four seasons. We are. Even, even if they're very short. And uh, we're so glad all of you are there listening with us and, and hanging out with us online. We're so glad to have all of you following us on Twitter and so forth. We should remind everybody of our Twitter handles. We should. Because yours is a little weird. Mine is a little weird. It's Mr. Underscore Electrico. That's M-R underscore Electrico. And mine is at Blue Gal. And then we have at Pro Left Podcast, which is uh, podcast announcements. Mm -hmm. So you can follow all three of those. We'd love to have you. It's my understanding, Blue Gal, that many of the larger podcasts, the big kid podcasts, are taking the week off. <laughs> next week, you mean? Uh, this week and or next week. They're taking a little break, oh. a little post-election, kind of put their feet up going, golly, I worked hard. I, I deserve this. I'm taking a little me time, some cucumbers, a facial. Well, and then, of course, there's all thing of people going on conservative retreats. Yes. And cruises, the conservative cruises, you keep, know. Keep retreating, guys. Just keep retreating. <laughs> Dante's Fifth well, Circle of Hell Cruise well, starring more, Newt one, Gingrich. One right? more step back. One more step back. A little, <laughs> little bit further. A little bit further. Yeah. Uh, we are, yeah. in fact, referring to the uh, collapse of the Republican Party, the slow motion collapse of the Republican Party. Yeah. Uh, as the yeah. blue sash. The blue sash. Thank you very much. That is an expression that you who live around the Great Lakes will understand. And no one else will. So we'll just spell it and let the rest of the people in the world look it up. It's S-E-I-C-H-E. -E. And if you lived around Chicago, you had to be aware of the Seish monster getting you certain times of the year. What does it mean, the Seish? It's a, It's basically it's an, it, when you have a landlocked body of water, like, a, like one of the Great Lakes. Um, mm -hmm. When all the water piles up on one end, when you get a big surge of water at one end or another, one side oh. or another through wind and and tide and mm -hmm. and so forth it's just suddenly oh my gosh there's a whole bunch of huge waves coming over the side so our our voting pool is a little bit landlocked it's kind yep. of it's kind of fixed in size and geographical area but all the water seems to be piling up on our side it's like so. a bowl sloshing from one side to one side it and is. spilling yeah so and that's kind of i i look at it as the beginning of tides coming in yes. you know that a tide a blue tide is coming in and uh, this was one wave of that tide and we'll have another wave in 2020 yeah. so uh we're just going to keep working like we do tide goes in tide goes um, out you, you know you, I go, you, can't explain you can't explain that <laughs> you can't explain that Bill O'Reilly we can explain it yeah. it's called it's called people being fed up <laughs> with uh, really bad Republican policy. Yeah. So and a horrible, we have, evil, monstrous president. Uh, and on top of uh, that, just right on top of bad Republican ideas, a big, right? A, a big orange turd on top of a giant shit Sunday, and that's what. Thank the you. Republican I didn't need to hear that. I'm sorry, but you know <laughs> that's that's your Thanksgiving uh, podcast. Pre Thanksgiving. <laughs> and speaking of speaking of delicious food, uh, our presenting sponsor. Uh, is yes. back to help us out. Where the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party supplies. They're doing amazing business in Washington, uh, catering to the biggest Republican farewell party since Watergate. So right. uh, they got crazy right. money now. They, sheet cake after sheet cake after sheet cake. They all say the same thing. Uh, don't let the <laughs> don't let the door yeah. hit you where the good Lord split you. Uh, yeah, and the they're just Lord fill in name yep. here. And you know what? We still don't know all of the losers yet. 
Uh, there's still no. We don't know all the losers yet. No. That's right. Not tired of winning over here on this side. That's for sure. Yeah. And they are going to do a recount, not for the governor's race, unfortunately, uh, but there will be a hand count, hand recount in Florida for both the Senate race and the uh, state administrator of agriculture also was close, so close that it was within the bounds of requiring a hand recount in Florida. Yep. Uh, we what do we know about Georgia? Do we know anything about Georgia yet? I, I don't know a thing about Georgia. I am with Mr. Lawrence O'Donnell on the state of Georgia, which yeah. is take a giant step back. It would be great if it if it turned out Stacey Abrams was the governor of Georgia. An, mm-hmm. an unmitigated, uh, bold statement. But the fact that she's within four votes in a state that had to cheat and cheat and cheat and suppress vote and cheat just to get you know, four votes ahead of her, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that a black woman – in Georgia should by all rights be the governor of Georgia today. If the, if Kemp hadn't been cheating his ass off, mm-hmm. uh, lying, running the filthy racist campaign and screaming, you know, uh, uh, voter suppression and, and rigged elections, R- Trump and everyone screaming the same fascist propaganda. It, it's a miracle. It mm-hmm. is a miracle. There's a, a, a black woman who should be governor today of jo- in Georgia. Um, and you and I have lived to see it. Yep. Uh, it should be she should be president. Hillary, I'm sorry, she should be governor. Hillary Clinton should be president. There's a whole lot of things that should have happened that didn't happen because Republicans lie and they cheat. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. the fact that we're this close, you can press your nose right up against the window and see what the alternate future would look like with just a little more effort and a little more, a, f- a few more Republicans going to jail um, would be it is an amazing sight. It, it It gives me a great deal of hope for the future. It, I have a lot of hope for the future too. I, it doesn't make losing any easier. No, no. And I'm uh, reminded, uh, looked at a couple of tweets today uh, that a colleague at Crooks and Liars sent. Uh, Alec McGillis of ProPublica reported that uh, 12 out of 16 U.S. House seats went to the Republicans in Ohio, despite Republicans winning only 52% of the total congressional vote. And Republicans managed to hold super majorities in the Ohio legislature despite losing the total state legislative vote. Right. Ari Berman reported that uh, Democrats won every statewide office in Wisconsin and 54 percent of the votes for state assembly in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. But Republicans got 63 percent of the seats. That is entirely due to gerrymandering. Yes, it is. They're cheating. It's entirely due to they cheating. They cheated. Yeah. They cheated with gerrymandering. So uh, we have work to do in that area. Uh, Ohio has already apparently passed a law that will take effect with the 2020 redistricting, saying parties don't get to redistrict and we're going to redistrict these uh, according to keeping counties together wherever possible and also um, where we can't because we have to have so many people per district, we will keep cities together. Right. So that is a logical way to do uh, redistricting. Uh, it does. It makes for many more competitive districts, which is better for everybody. Yes. That that means that you will actually get candidates who have to respond logically to both parties in order to win. And it lessens the possibility that an extremist can come in and gerrymander because it's an incredibly safe Republican seat and a Republican uh, can come in over some random issue and say, well, you're not Republican enough. If I primary you with a lot of money and win, I automatically win my race for Congress. In in Illinois, Uh, that means we might have 50 percent fewer actual Nazis uh, and end up in the general election. Which how many Nazis were there, Drift Glass, uh, in the I, Illinois? It, it, yeah, for running <laughs> for office in Illinois, running I believe there on were the three. ballot in the Republican Party in Illinois. We believe there were three Nazis. I believe there were three, which is you know four too many, frankly. Um, <laughs> but you know, you know, I I'm, and they were all in one party. That was the funny part. They all had that same letter after their name. I am. You know, this is this is what is happening to. They are. It's QAnon and Nazis. I am as, is where this party is headed. I am as one with Joliet Jake and Elwood Blues when it comes to Illinois Nazis. <laughs> Illinois Nazis. I hate, I hate these guys. <laughs> um, yeah, 
Jake and Elwood and Indiana Jones, right? Indiana Jones, kind of hate <laughs> Nazis. I hate these guys. Hate these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In our little neck of the woods here, we are still. Um, I, I talk to people who are very close to the uh, Betsy Dirks and Lonergan campaign. You know, they're, mm-hmm. the staff has all been dismissed, but a few, and they're just sort of figuring out what to do with the next over the next two years, and not you know gearing up for the next fight because really, when you've thrown your body and soul into something for sixteen months. Really, and, and you lose, um, and it's your first time out of the box. You went from you know, not doing this to being a full time congressional person. Uh, it, it requires some. You know, you got to go into the uh, into the decompression tank for a little bit. I was going to say you mental. Gotta, mentally, you have to. Yeah, yeah. you got to come yeah. up slow and not get bubbles in your blood. You know, it's it's it, you know, it takes some adjusting. Um, but it it is it is a fascinating thing. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to go to a panel. We're recording this on Thursday night, by the way. Uh, a local panel on what happened during the der- during the election mm-hmm. um, with a bunch of local uh, shoe leather reporters who actually do reporting on local politics and talk with great deal of knowledge about it. <clears throat> some of whom I know, some of whom have interviewed us for our local paper, um, our local throwaway uh, Illinois Times paper, and it is something to it's something to meditate on that. The Lonergan campaign ran the very best campaign it could. Mm-hmm. It, it it made no mistakes as far as I can tell. I, I'm repeating myself from last week. But it, it you have to learn something about the people who are your neighbors, the people who are in your congressional district when you have someone who's a joke and who lies and who wins. And someone right. who's a decent human being who ran an excellent campaign, national backing, local backing, I'm again, I'm repeating myself, but had national political figures coming here campaigning for her and still lost, but only lost by 3,700 or 3,600 votes, but still lost. And that really does tell you that there's a certain irreducible minimum right now of really awful people in this country, really Mm -hmm. shitty, hardcore Republicans who aren't going to budge no matter what. It doesn't matter how either that or they are. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but either that or they're just so mentally asleep that they just out of habit vote r after their name and that is as bad for as far as i'm concerned uh don't be that guy don't be that guy who is so ingrained in i'll vote and and i know i've said vote blue no matter who this term but you do get cho- a choice in the primaries and you do, you do. get a choice <laughs> this you vote do. is supposed to be about a choice right now for us it's a very easy choice but it's yeah. supposed to be a choice and uh I just think that that people are there, there are just people here who've done the same thing the same way for 50 years mm-hmm. and don't see why they should change. Don't see it. And uh, this is the battle that we've got going on. 90 percent of our political problems are based in a generational battle. Yes, it is. Yes, I really think that's yeah. the case. And you know what? Here's, um, here's something to add on to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a whole bunch of our social and, and economic and cultural problems. Uh, in our own little burg here, there's a there's really a, a fight over the future, mm-hmm. and there are a whole bunch of retired conservative state workers who live on a pension who don't want to change a goddamn thing, right. and a bunch of people under them, a generation or two below them, who very much would like this city not to look like 1977 for the rest mm-hmm. of their lives, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there's a real fight between them because and it it, it that fight gets reflected in politics. It gets reflected in local politics. Um, there's a broad consensus now that the city government just has no vision at all. It's just right. we'll just we'll just do maintenance, we'll pay our bills, we'll do a few things off the edges, but you know, nobody take any chances, nobody do anything bold, nobody change much of anything because it'll piss off the old people who vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that mm-hmm. ripples into everything. It, it it decides if your downtown looks vibrant and exciting and welcoming. Or it's old and fly specked, and because I want to go to the same restaurant I went to in 1967. Right, right. So, and I and I know. think I don't want brown people in the downtown because right. that's dangerous. Right. I want to keep I want to keep Springfield segregated because that makes me feel safe. Well, and this came up yeah. yesterday. Um, uh, I, I I've, I've been going to a lot of meetings for a person who doesn't really have a full time job outside of you know the little this I podcast, this yes. podcast, <laughs> and my writing. I go to an awful lot of meetings with a lot of community lot of meetings. Yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> and and that subject came up from uh, 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 front and center last night, which mm-hmm. was it took a while to get there because mm-hmm. you kind of mm-hmm. kind of ease or because I'm looking around the room and there's just a bunch of white guys in the room mm-hmm. uh, with mm-hmm. almost no exception. But 
it's sort of like what why are things changing now and we finally got to the part where we talked about look um when it came to this is something i do know something about when it came to getting rid of manufacturing jobs Mm -hmm. um you go to all the bad neighborhoods in chicago not all of them most of them they were once industrial hubs and they started shedding jobs shutting the factories down moving them overseas factory owners could make a lot more money by firing people and just outsourcing all the work Nobody gave a shit about that happening as long as it was as it was happening in black neighborhoods and mm-hmm. brown neighborhoods. And those people suddenly didn't have any jobs. And suddenly you had all the endemic problems of poverty cropping up in those neighborhoods. Well, and nobody gives a shit that Flint doesn't have clean water yet. Exactly. Exactly. If it was a white community, it would have been fixed by now. And now you've hit upon it. Yeah. Um, that's why that's why the opioid epidemic were, were irresponsible junkies when it was those people yeah and now it's a health care a health crisis epidemic i'm glad that we're addressing it as an epidemic as, as it should have been all along but the truth of the matter is until the pain of minority communities and dispossessed communities and outsider communities is visited upon the majority community until mm-hmm. they start hurting the same way the rest of the country is hurting nothing changes yeah because they're really you know it's it's i don't like the fact that he tweets uh but my 401k is doing great Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. those people will just keep right on voting. And that really, uh, if you if you don't mind me jumping just ahead a little bit, dovetails nicely into the ta Coates interview sure. with Chris Hayes. Yep. Because, uh, first of all, that barely makes up for the fact that they put Corey Lewandowski on MSNB three times in two days. He has a book and it dropped like yesterday or the day before. And you and I mo- both know goddamn well that he has some sort of contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, by, by the way, he also works for the Mike Pence pack yes right um, right he's you know he, nobody ever gets fired in that universe it doesn't matter how shitty you are you never get really truly fired um the speakers bureau that that got him the job at cnn dropped him but you know he's if you're in the club eventually someone's going to pick up your contract so i guarantee you deductively it worked like this got a book contract the book rep went to msnbc <coughs> and made him the same deal that they always make which is mm-hmm. Look, we represent Corey Lewandowski, uh, Satan, and uh, Buddha, and Barack Obama. If you'd ever like to have the good guys on your show ever again, you will book Satan on your show three Uh times. (laughs) And that's the deal. And since it's a corporation, they say, sure, we'll take that deal. All we have to do is put the shitty asshole on on three different shows uh, across, or four different shows, let him talk about his book a little bit. That's it. Yes. And then they hand him a list of questions that you're not allowed to ask. Guaranteed, this is how it works. And here's the negotiation. You're not going to ask them about abusing women. You're not going to ask them about being an asshole. You're certainly not going to ask them about a non-disclosure agreement. You're going to treat them like a normal guest, let them have his five minutes, and then the the deed is done. That's how corporations work. Corporations don't have conscience. They have a profit motive. They have business plans. And that's how it works. So you're going to end up because it's all for profit. Now, the, the only upside is that there's a little bit of flexibility in that universe in which Chris Hayes can invite Tana Hasty Coates on and have a really interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah. And that conversation was really very pointed and and hopeful, but also with a, a, a lot of skepticism. And it was, you don't need to have a majority of the people in this country who are racist. Right. Um, all you need is a minority and a bunch of people in the middle who'd rather not get involved. Mm-hmm. We're perfectly okay looking the other way. That's really all you need. And that's what we have in this country. We have 30%, for 26%, 38%, whatever the number is, who are racist and they know it. And we all know it. The Republican Party is a racist party. The Republican Party is a fascist party. Donald Trump is a racist, misogynist scumbag. And the people of that party elected someone who sounds like them. Everyone who worked for the Republican Party for the last 30 years knows it. All the ad men know it. Rick Wilson knows it. Michael Steele knows goddamn well he was working for racists and they, they did it for money. They all know it. They all fucking know it. There's no way they couldn't know it. But it only works if everyone at the periphery, all the respectable ones, are willing to pretend it's not really happening, are willing to look away. And that's what they talked about. And it, it was a really fruitful conversation. It didn't last very long. But it was a really I, – I love it when he goes on the air. I love it when they have this kind of conversation. Because it gets right to the core of the matter, which is race is the country's original sin. And they talk about it honestly and openly in ways that I truly wish they would do for an hour. Yep. 
I love Ta-Nehisi Coates. And yeah. he tells the truth in a way all of us, all of us white liberals need to hear uh, in that he is not optimistic. And we need to hear that. I am a very optimistic person about the future. I tend to be Pollyannish and really believe that we can fix problems. It is good to hear a dose of, you know, uh, we can lose the Georgia governor's race and never win again. Right. Because right. The, the laws in Georgia will stay the way they are unless we fix or it. Or they'll get worse. Or, or they'll get, get worse. worse. Yep. 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 If, if these people are left, if these, if if the situation is neutral, mm -hmm. the people who cheated and cheated and cheated will cheat harder next time. Yeah, right. The, the, and that's a really important lesson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a lesson that that almost no one except liberal bloggers took away from the Bush administration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which was once these fuckers were let off the hook. This is why I have such a bug up my ass about never Trumpers. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, by and large, if you let people who have committed one crime against civilization after another after another after another including lying us into the wrong war fucking that war up destroying the economy and all the rest if you let them off the hook the only thing they will learn is that you're an idiot that you can be taken advantage of and all they have to do is make a puppy sad face and hold up a shiny object and you'll move on to the next thing and they'll go right back to being awful people they, they have to have their brain reformatted mm -hmm. And I don't see a whole lot of these people admitting that they have made a massive existential mistake by following the Republican Party and giving it their heart and soul for the last 30 years. I see a lot of them making tiny apologies for a, for their party somehow becoming mesmerized three years ago. But almost none of them admit that the real problem is the entire infrastructure, the machine that they served all these years. Yeah. Because they want to go back to doing that. That's the thing that that you're going to see in the next you know, three months, four months, four minutes. I don't know how long yeah. it's going to take. But the the, the press, the, the Beltway media and these reasonable Republicans have been so thirsty for somebody in, in, in power to have a D after their name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they can go back to saying, see, it's both sides. See, it's both. This is what the whole fucking Pelosi thing is about. Yep. The Pelosi about, thing is they, about both sides in large part. Yep. We yeah. need to have Democrats in disarray. No, we're having a leadership argument. Yeah. Those happen a lot. They happen all the time. And it'll it'll pass when it passes, and they'll vote, and they'll move on. And we have things to say about that in this podcast, too. But the, the short answer is they need both sides to be involved in the news. They need something to hang their the other hook of their both sides hammock on. And there's been nothing for them to do that for th for going on three years now. And so they're desperate to find any reason to go back to what they were doing before. And what they were doing before is why things are fucked up now. That's right. So and also time, and also we're, we had a letter this week from a very nice, generous lady donated to the podcast who took issue with uh, our criticism of Steve Schmidt in particular. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't have an argument with what Steve Schmidt says. I have an argument that Steve Schmidt is taking the seat of a liberal analyst who's been yes. right since yeah. the Bush years. And that, that is, and Steve Schmidt is not asking me to buy his book or saying, oh my God, the Republican Party is full of Republicans. Is How did this happen? Uh, I think he really clearly knows from his time at the Sarah Palin uh, lap <laughs> exactly what well. happened. Right. <laughs> uh, he and Nicole Wallace both worked uh, to try to get Sarah Palin elected vice president of the United States, and they are both ashamed of that uh, right. part of their careers. So what bothers me about Steve Schmidt is not what he says, uh, right. and I applaud what he says. Uh, his seat at the table of television analysis belongs to a Digby belongs yes, to a liberal, well-spoken liberal who has been right since the Iraq war, with, since we were lied into the Iraq war. I'd like to introduce a little bit of breaking news. It's not breaking, breaking, but this came across my Twitter feed just now. Yeah. Uh, Senator Mike Lee from Utah yeah. uh, went to the Federalist Society and uh, announced that the only way to avert a violent civil war is to eradicate a whole bunch of federal programs, including the interstate highway system. Yay! <laughs> Mike federal Lee, higher education. Mike Lee is not, uh, you know, he's not he's one of the US... sane people in the Senate. No. He's a United States senator. Yes, he's he is. a fucking United States he's senator. A nut and job. he thinks, 
housing policy, work regulations, uh, these are all terrible things and should be eliminated because they're all liberal. They're, they're, it's the only way to stop liberals, the left, from launching a civil war. Does he realize there would highways. be no Utah without the interstate highway system? No. Okay. No. Uh, we're we're going to mention quickly that Facebook sucks. Yes, Facebook sucks um, hard. Man. This is bad, and uh, they've been covering it up. And I agree with the person on MSNBC today who said Sheryl Sandberg is just a perfect heat shield for this <laughs> yes, because she she's you know recent widow. She wrote a book about recovering from grief. She wrote books about leaning in and being feminist and uh, being a woman business being a businesswoman and goes before Congress and seems humble and wants to fix things and. You know, continuous process improvement. Um, Does she know her value, Blue she Gal? Does her she value. know her value? Oh my gosh! <clears throat> yeah, Best, she's a friend of Mika. She's besties with Mika, yeah. and uh, and Facebook. You know, hired Chuck Schumer's daughter, and sure. so uh, you know, we're we're just working real hard to make sure people can connect. That's really what it's all about. And all we want to in do the meantime, they're hiring Republican <clears throat> op research firm to plant stories about. It, George Soros is funding the enemies of Facebook, and right. uh, and it's an anti-Semitic attack as well, you know, on on Facebook. So uh, to hide that they are cashing checks written in rubles uh-huh. for advertising that influences the election. So, well, yeah. Let's all remember: Facebook is a giant advertising. Platform. It is. That's you are the product. Yep. It, it is your, and it is a giant corporation. And corporations are machines that do, do not have a conscience. They just keep doing what they're yeah. doing until someone stops them. And government and is what stops them, which is why Republicans exactly. want small government. This is right. why. And they don't want anything standing the way. And whatever the corporation does, it doesn't really matter. I'm not saying I'm – not, I'm not, it, it's an amoral machine. Well, it doesn't but it, and matter. And the corporation, regardless of whether it's a, one that progressives love or not – uh, we have to regulate these corporations. We have to. Yes, we to. do. Because calculating the human cost of decisions is not something corporations do. do. They, are not, they calculate, yeah. what do I need to do to maximize quarterly profits? And if it's uh, make better baby food, that's great. If it's destroy human civilization, that's what we'll do. Mm-hmm. But there's no one inside the machine that has a that it is that's its conscience that right. says, wait a minute, that's too far. We can't do that. Because – those people are weeded out. The, the, the purpose of the machine is to make sure the machine keeps running and keeps growing. And there's nothing to stop it. It's it's, it's growth is regulated like cell growth is regulated by the body. Mm-hmm. The body is the government. And when it runs out of control, it's a cancer and it will kill us all. And that's – and the thing that, that Republicans are saying is, no, no, the cancer is good. We want that. We want, the, we want all these markets running completely on their own, out of control with no regulation at all. And somehow that will make us all free. And that's a lie. It's yeah. it's a gargantuan lie, but it's a, it's a lie that makes rich people really happy mm-hmm. because they have a lot invested in not having the government tell them what to do. And Facebook is now everywhere. Yeah, Facebook is everywhere. I mean, there are businesses in town, people I know who could not stay in business if it weren't for Facebook. Right, right, right. And it's I used to teach computer classes and I would explain to my students – Every time you get a free T-shirt online, uh, you're for some piece of personal information or some whatever, you're giving away more of your your privacy forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. handing over your future, your profile, your ability to to have your brain mind to sell you shit, and that shit might be uh, genes and it might be a political point of view right. to a massive soulless machine that does not give a shit about you. Yeah. So do it conscious, do it you know self aware if you. Yeah. If you don't care fine but that's the problem is that there are lots and lots of people out there who really do just want to look at pictures of their grandchildren and yes. uh this is where they a friendly place where they can do that and then they see that their friend quote unquote on uh-huh. facebook someone they've never met before and fa- face to face but is but their friend, friend on grandkids. facebook and her cute puppy photos uh-huh. uh is pushing friendly fascism <laughs> you know on the facebook and you don't know or is or contrary wise is uh-huh. pushing a story she read about hillary clinton using clinton foundation funds to fund her daughter's wedding which is a lie 
Yes, but that came out in November, right before the election. It was all over Facebook. And gosh, maybe we can't vote for Hillary after all. You know, if her daughter's wedding was paid for with illegal funds. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean. This caravan has me concerned, Carol. I, I know. Carol. Right. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Getting back to Pelosi. Yes. Uh, and the five white guys who are trying to unseat the queen here and <laughs> yeah. winding up pissing off the activists who were so right. hard to get us to this moment. Yes. Uh, I mentioned to you this morning, and I know when I did, you just loved me even more than you already do, Drift Glass. Yeah, as if that were possible. <laughs> uh, secession planning. That yes. this is this is a hobby horse of yours. That it is. Uh, there are a lot of small manufacturing businesses around the country that have gone out of business and have, as a result, laid off five workers, ten workers, twenty workers, and our economy has had injury by a thousand cuts. With all of these yep. small manufacturing uh, entities closing down because the owner of that entity did not. And you tell me if I'm saying this wrong, but I think I'm You're saying it right. right. The owner yep. of this entity made no plan for how uh, their business was going to stay in business when they retired. Yes. And they don't want their children, either they don't have children that can inherit the business or are interested in inheriting the business, or they don't want their children to be a manufacturer. They want their child to work in a bank or a law firm or have a white right. collar. That's why they sent them to graduate schools, because they want them to go have a better calmer white collar business rather than uh bricks and mortar they want them to be podcasters let's, <laughs> let's be honest they want the kids to be podcasters. okay so yeah uh but there's no plan for how to keep this business running how to right. keep how to keep these people employed and uh so they retire and they shut down and there's five people out of work and then there's 10 people out of work and eventually yep. main street no longer exists everybody's working for yes. walmart okay and nobody can figure out why this happened because yeah. it happens chronically over a long period of time. And, and, and it's little, Mexico little, and it's little by little. And it's, but it's <sighs> these little tiny – and yeah. I say tiny, I mean compared to Walmart, they're tiny. But they well, – And fa yeah. family-owned businesses have this like order of magnitude failure over the generations. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. A, just a staggering number fail between the first two generations and – it's something like 80 to 90% of them fail after the second generation. And it's amazing because it, we have a sign company in Springfield that is going on third generation. Yep. And yep. part of the reason is they kept having sons. When yes. you keep having sons and your the whole life and also the mother was very involved in the business. The, the person she was, that founded absolutely. the business, he and his wife uh were, both worked on the business. So mom and dad were working on the business. Sons to go in into the business. Grandsons are now going into the business. And this, this yeah. company is flourishing because they have a plan and it is a family owned business that there's no question that everyone will work. And then they, they also have a sense of family about their employees as well. And that's not, that's not unusual, but uh, the secession planning is having lots of sons to, to inherit the business. That's, I realize that's sexism, but that's the way manufacturing goes, it goes to men. And, uh, but also having mom in the business, mom involved, it made, I'm sure made a huge difference in keeping that business going. Small companies also find, there's a way around. There's a lot of ways around that. You you buy, sell the company to the person who's been running your shop for years, which may or may not be a member of the family. You have an ESOP program, which is an employee mm -hmm. stock ownership plan, which is a way the employer employees can actually buy the company and keep it running. The idea being that you did great. You started this thing in your garage in the 50s or 60s. You did wonderful. You've done wonderful for years. You built a, mm -hmm. a, a, mm -hmm. a, a an enterprise that survived shock and, and recession and recession and exports. And you've got a prospering little business going here. Speaking of moms that are in charge of businesses, Nancy Pelosi. Nan Nancy Pelosi needs a secession plan. She doesn't have one. They, and she doesn't have do. one. Or she hasn't announced one, I should say. It's not obvious to us. The, the elephant in the room and I, or the giant donkey in the room of the Democratic yeah. Party in the House House, is that Nancy Pelosi will not be there forever. And that is not no. a criticism of Nancy Pelosi. That is a fact. No. That is just yes. a fact. And it does not comfort those people who want a Democratic majority in the House to function beyond Nancy Pelosi to see uh -huh. Steny Hoyer sitting next to her. 
That is Danny. It's Danny. <laughs> the voted most up and coming young man, nineteen seventy two <laughs> and seventy three. <laughs> like no, 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 no. Everybody around the table is an old gray head, yeah. and that nothing wrong with that. But you you've skipped an entire generation. You have you've you just bypassed an entire generation of leadership because you because unlike in business, maybe it's exactly like business politics. The danger of training your successor is they'll try to kill you. <laughs> Um, you know, don't mean the, that it's the clean on yes, approach. Right. No, I don't mean it literally, but it's it's when you train your successor, you're admitting your mortality and you're you you at some point have to give up power. You have to turn to the person next to you and say, No, this is their question. And we have formal arrangements for that. They're called elections. But when you have inch intra party or intra rather intra party changes, you have to be able to manage those over the course of generations. Right. And the Democratic Party's done a really shitty job of doing right. that. They haven't cultivated leadership at the, at the grassroots level. They haven't recruited new interesting candidates. They, they all came out of the woodwork this time around. Uh, and they all ran. They all ran largely the same kind of campaign that was you know specific to their locality. But they, have all, they all ran as proud Democrats. But there's no structure in place to say, OK, um, here's how you move up. Now, there, there is theoretically one, committee assignments and that sort of thing. But when the person who's going to chair your party has already chaired your party a decade mm-hmm, ago. Mm-hmm. And 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 the people that you look around are in leadership have all been in leadership for years and years and years. Something is wrong with the way you're doing politics. Right, right. And, and because they don't have a succession plan, there's no idea that we have to nurture the next bench of leaders who will come along after us, who will be in their 50s and 60s, maybe when they arrive in these seats, maybe younger, maybe older, and take over and keep the the project, the Democratic Party project running, keep progressive politics running, and it's a fatal flaw. And the the Republicans had the young guns, young guns. Right? They had they just came in and just ripped the place out of the hands. But these were all all they did was take what Republicans have been saying they believed all along and turn to the mob that's been electing them and saying we we want to get rid of the aren't crazy enough. Yeah. yeah. All we're saying is we would like to continue the progressive liberal project for the next century. We like it to ha- include clean water and clean air and education and healthcare and climate change acknowledgement. And some of these things are going to require fairly substantial, swift, and drastic actions. And we need people in place who understand that and are willing to do the hard work necessary to the heavy lifting necessary to do that. And that doesn't happen if they see no clear path. To leadership. Right, right, right. And and there are a, a number, I mean, it really is a generational thing. There are a number of Congress people, uh, Democrats, in their 40s and 50s that may never have a chance to be in leadership, although they are experienced members of the right. House who've been there for a long time. Uh, but because the 70 and 80 year olds just are, are clinging to power, and again, I believe in experience and I believe in understanding yes. how to move votes and how to make, how to get things done. But you've got to, at some point, uh, recognize the power of mortality and prepare for it. And that's, that is, as I said, that is 90% of our political problem is based on a generation not wanting to prepare for the inevitability of their own demise and, and, right just clinging. And I, and I, it's understandable. It's human to want to do that. But if you are looking long-term out 10 years, out 20 years to keep the democratic project going, you've got to prepare for it and not see the new people that are coming in as an insurrection. Uh, I don't think I don't know how to how to put it otherwise. Communicate, communicate, communicate. I hope Nancy Pelosi is reelected. My, that is my personal I feeling. Do too. Uh, but I yeah. also hope that Nancy Pelosi starts surrounding herself with uh, people who can inherit the gavel from her, uh, rather than just Steny Hoyer. And no offense, you know Steny, you're a great guy. Uh, Barack Obama was good at this. Yeah. Brought in a lot of young people, young voices, even if they had a little snow on the roof, as we mm-hmm. say, um, brought in good people. Yeah, he did. And gave them their gave them their head, as they say, and and really listened to them and let them sort of do their thing. 
and if it, it, and he cultivated people around him who could come in and do the work he was doing after he left because the the thought was it'll be Hillary Clinton mm-hmm. and we're going to keep heading the direction we're headed in mm-hmm. now and we're, and we as on the executive branch will certainly need people uh Hillary Clinton's good at this yeah Hillary Clinton brings in lots and lots of young people young women and and shows them the ropes and and the advice she gives to people is always the same which is I hear your voice I hear your passion I agree with your sentiment you're going to lose if you don't have a plan if you don't have a 10 point actionable mm-hmm. plan show me what legislative shit i can do to help advance your cause and i'll do it yeah but and she, you know, and she shouting at me is and not going to help she talked directly to the black lives matter movement about that and she and did. they did they did follow her suggestions i don't think it was entirely due to her but uh no, they did come no. up with a 10 point plan and and have worked to did. change laws locally regarding police brutality that is making a difference around the country uh while we're talking uh-huh. about that i want to give a uh shout out and applause to tom perez uh yeah. chairman of the democratic <laughs> national committee who you know has a thankless job and every time he's on tv i roll my eyes way back into my head cuz he his yep. talking points are boring uh two things he's done right where it was necessary, he recruited winning candidates who were uh, in part of the local community. Uh, he didn't have to recruit everywhere. Some places they were self-recruiting, but the places where he needed to recruit, he recruited winning candidates. The other thing he did is he did not make enemies of people who were doing his work for him. So the indivisible groups, the uh, blue wave type groups, anyone who had that sort of blue thing going on where they were registering voters or increasing enthusiasm or whatever it was that they were doing to get Democrats in office. Tom Perez kept his eye on the prize. He did not see these folks as competitors to the DCCC, which is, you know, I will not give money to the DCCC because they they promote too many blue dogs. His job was to get Democrats in office. He did it. And he, one of the ways he did it was to not treat progressive groups, uh, people doing his work, getting that job done. Uh, he didn't treat them as competitors, and that is to be applauded. Hey, Nancy Pelosi said, if you need to run against me, run against me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if she, if, you, if they promised to, in their campaign to run against her, yeah. which some did, yes. If you need to... If you need to beat up on me to win, then do yep. it. Just win. Yep. Then we'll sort all this out yep. afterwards. But it maddens me the number of really good-hearted, thoughtful, passionate liberals who don't understand the really basics of politics. Number one, you have to win. Mm-hmm. Number two, you have to win all three branches of government. Mm-hmm. And you have to work with people you might not like. Right. right. Unless you wave a magic wand and turn everyone into um, Bernie Sanders mm-hmm. you know, or or whatever – uh, unless you can do that, you're never going to have what you need. You're never going to have the perfect mix and mix combination of of progressives and liberals running every branch of government. That's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn to take what you can get, consolidate your wins, learn from your losses, and move forward. And and unless you unless you want to condemn yourself, which I, I really am convinced a whole lot of people would rather do, sit on the sidelines and bitch yeah. well that sounds that's intelligent so, and, yeah. and some people think it will get them laid so. I, I have some breaking news by More the way, breaking and news? It, and by the, way on the twitter it it doesn't it doesn't get you laid uh well it might but being not negative the, all the really time doesn't get that. you laid oh really yeah, <clears throat> yeah. well there, i'm sure there's a pessimism club where you know whoever the most cynical is <laughs> yes, gets, right. <clears throat> gets a hearty hand job at the end of the night but you don't want that that's no kind of life for you um Apparently, Florida's Broward County mm-hmm. submitted the recount numbers two minutes late, and therefore the results will not count. Mm. So take that for what it's worth. Um, it's breaking. It might be true. It might be Ari Melber, you know, pulling my chain. But I thought this is a, this is a, one of those moments that you sort of pin in time, so future generations can know exactly when we recorded this. This is what happened while we were talking. They were already ordering the hand recount, which is going to take longer yeah. anyway. So I don't know how that works out. Anyway, okay. Shall we move on with our scheduled program? Well, I want yeah. to talk for a minute about uh, noise. Knitting? Noise and knitting. And this is sort of a Bible bitch, it's sort of not. Um, it just has become really clear to me again this week uh, how much noise Donald Trump is making and melting yes. down and constantly uh, trying to stir up 
attention for himself, and he's good at that on cable news. He's really good at that. Uh, the um, important thing to remember is the still small voice of truth, and that means that God is not in the wind, the wave, the uh, earthquake, or the fire, as as the Bible says. God is in the still small voice of truth. And then there is a quote that I, I swear <laughs> somebody screamed at me from the air in the living room uh, uh -huh. from Elizabeth Zimmerman, who is one of the original goddesses of knitting. Uh, she's uh. passed away now, but she uh, wrote lots of books about knitting back in the early 70s and uh, made videos and was really one of these people that everyone sort of consider everyone in the knitting world considers their godmother. Uh, and she said during the Watergate hearings, she said, knit on with confidence and hope through every crisis. And uh, I just love that. And so we, it, I have that on my wall in my office, knit on with confidence and hope through every crisis. Uh, and sometimes that means turning off the noise. Um, and again, I have blocked Trump on Twitter. You can still get to Trump's tweets if you block him. Uh, and sure. when I have to look at a Trump tweet for work, I definitely do that. Uh, I go and I go and click on him and find it and look at it and sometimes have to embed it. And that's my job. Uh, but I don't have to have his tweets appearing just because someone liked them in my timeline or someone retweeted them right. in my timeline or someone is discussing them in my timeline. He is a noisemaker. And it is time to say, as I have had to teach my daughters about a whole series of stressors in their lives, fuck that noise. <laughs> and I have taught my daughters fuck that noise as a way of sort of coping with stress. Uh, Donald Trump, Fuck that noise. We really need to get to that point now since he is not going to be uh, as powerful and he's going to have a check on him starting in January. And he's losing his mind. And he's losing his mind. He's He is losing his mind. Uh, and I don't feel sorry for him. He no. has the power to resign sure. anytime he wants to. And I have one small problem with your sentiment. Okay. Which is I don't know how to knit. Yeah. You, you're you going to have to find something else to do. Yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think of something, Blue Gal. I'll think of something. Photoshop yeah. with confidence yeah. and hope. Yeah, yes, that's, that's right. One pixel at a time. Uh -huh. All right, you have an awards show going on at your blog. I do. I just want to mention on my blog, I, I have uh, created me and a bunch of judges from Broward County got together <laughs> uh, to create a new award called the Blocker Awards. The Blocker Awards are people who block me on Twitter. Um <laughs> <clears throat> because it's all about me. This is how you turn criticism into the story of yourself. Uh, and I wouldn't do this because, let's face it, as I've said in many different ways, Twitter is a sewer, uh, useful, but you don't want to drink from it. Um, it's it's a toilet, uh, but it's functional and it serves its purpose. And blocking someone on Twitter is nothing. It's just it's a daily weeding the garden activity. But when I started to notice that they fell into dis uh, discernible categories, um, I thought that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I created the Blocker Awards, um, and I'm not going to tell you anything. Named after Dan Blocker, right? Named after Dan Blocker, the, the the great and the good Dan Blocker, and a wonderful story that Harlan Ellison tells about Dan Blocker that tells you a lot about how screwed up in the head TV makes people. Mm -hmm. uh, the story of of this nice woman, a convert. Dan Blocker was a, an actor on a show called Bonanza that I'm betting half of you never heard of before. But it was on the air for roughly 700 years, and it was a cowboy Very show. Very popular yeah. show. Extremely popular. It went on for years and years and years. And uh, 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 it was three or four sons uh, and their father. And uh, uh, this is sort of warning, ladies, don't marry uh, Lauren Green. Uh, apparently, no, you'll die in an hour. Anyone who has a child by Lauren <laughs> Green will die leaving, you know, four orphan sons behind by different mothers, which is, they never explained that, but it was necessary for the plot, I suppose. So uh, Dan Blocker was was a big guy. He was a professional boxer, as a matter of fact, before he became an actor. And But he's a nice, big, gentle soul who, who passed away many, many years ago. And a woman saw him in the supermarket and walked up and said, when you get home to the Ponderosa, 
you tell your pa that Hop Singh shouldn't be making dinner for you. Come over to my house and I'll make good dinner. I'll make great dinner. I'll come out there and I'll make dinner for the rest of you. <laughs> and he said to her, ma'am, my name is Dan Blocker. I'm an actor. And I go home every every night to my wife and kids in whatever suburb of, yeah, you know. Beverly Hills or and, whatever, right. And she looked Perfect. at him and part of her brain knew he was an actor. But part yeah. of her brain yeah. wouldn't accept the fact that what she was watching was imaginary. Yeah. And it's that. It's that mental discontinuity that screws you up if you don't understand the context of what you are watching. And what that are, explains Donald Trump. Yes. What you are watching when you are watching Corey Lewandowski on mm -hmm. the Casey Hunt show, Cassie Hunt show, whatever the hell it is, and whatever the hell else it was, and Hardball. Mm -hmm. is you are watching a puppet show. You are watching mm -hmm. a, a bunch of people dressing up and pretending to be the news. They're not the news. That's not the news. This is an entertainment. When when Chuck Todd puts Hugh Hewitt and God knows who all else, a bunch of conservatives to sit around chatting, uh, uh, shooting the fat and just talking about stuff. And David Brooks, you know, giving his infinite wisdom about how the midterms don't really count because Democrats didn't embrace large enough, manly enough issues, um, <laughs> which just blew my mind because this. Uh, oh, we're having this problem all over. Yeah. You know, it, this is this is going on in, in literature as well. There's been trending issues about whether uh, women can be in fiction. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, oh, God, know? yeah. And, but, but it's important to understand the context in which you're watching something. Yeah. It's, it's not what you are watching. Uh, as, as much as I love the kindly Dr. Maddow, as much as I enjoy Chris Hayes, you know, 60% of the time, um, and respect what they do, you're watching a corporation produce a series of prepackaged cast and scripted entertainments mm -hmm. all day long specifically designed to to bring people in so they can sell them stuff so mm -hmm. and and somewhere in there there's good information there's there's people who i agree with and there's political positions that i think are important and conversations that are vital but it's in this big sewer of other shit because the point of the having this company is not to deliver you the news. The point of this company is to make money for Comcast. Right. right. And yeah. so, and so what you're watching is an illusion in a very real sense. What you're watching is someone else's puppet show to keep you watching. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, but that's what screwed this woman up when she talked to Dan Blocker. She right. could not get it through her head that what she was watching wasn't real. Mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. felt so real to her that's 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 yeah. what's powerful yeah. about the illusion it feels like news if it, it seems like news you know we have at least you and i probably have this echo memory of walter cronkite and yeah. huntley and brinkley and that's what yeah. the news was and these people all dress up and sound sort of like that and look sort of like that but they're not that and if you really want to see what happens when the puppet show is all the way out of control just go watch fox news fox yeah. It's it's the same cast of characters, same haircut, same suit, same set, same graphics, same music, same everything, with people who are just lying all day long, mm -hmm. and a bunch of people who that night that like that nice lady watching Bonanza think what they're watching is real, and think what they're or think what they're watching is Walter Cronkite, which yeah. is bad enough if you think you're watching half an hour of publicly regulated right. You know, this is this is what it was in the 60s. Right. They were required by FCC rules to have public interest programming. Yes, they and didn't want to. Was, <laughs> they were forced by the government right. to have half an hour of public interest programming. And so they did. Uh, and that doesn't mean that Walter Cronkite never lied or that there was never any kind of angle uh, to Walter Cronkite's coverage. But it was uh, not pressured. The way cable news is no. by the advertising dollar, not not even in a minute way. It wasn't the profit center. It wasn't the profit center of the network, right? right. All right, so uh, we're going to do a quick news roundup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've already talked about Tana Hesse Coates and Corey Lewandowski and right? how awful that was. How great the first one was, and how awful the second one was. And there's a wonderful thread that I, I got I kicked off that is me and Joan Walsh and Charlie Pierce weighed in a couple of times on why this happens and what the fuck and so forth. It's, if you're on Twitter, which is a sewer, I admit, it might be worth your time. Uh, but the Miller investigation is apparently it. right after the election. It's back in the headlines. It's firing on all cylinders. It's it's getting ready to indict people. There's a whole bunch of people just 
crap in their pants, all of in the, the, the Trump orbit, and it's made President Stupid very, very sad and angry. He's nuts, and he's, yeah, losing his mind. And and we'll get into more of that in a minute. Uh, yeah. Trump will go on a second date with Kim Jong Un. Meanwhile, North Korea has co- continued its ballistic missile program at sixteen hidden bases identified in new satellite images. You know, the ones that don't exist anymore and everything's under control and we're all safe now. All that's a lie, by the way. 61% of Democrats see Republicans as, quote, racist slash bigoted slash sexist. 31% of Republicans say they view Democrats the same way. It's the same. It's the same. You know, the real racists are the people who say racist. Uh Mm Uh-huh. The White House argued that Trump has broad discretion to regulate access to the White House for journalists. Uh, The judge is going to tell them, no, you don't tomorrow morning if if my prediction comes true. All right. Uh, There's a a woman running for office named uh, Cindy, I believe, Hyde Smith. (laughs) <laughs> um that and in her story runoff and yeah 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 and her story branches in two different directions the first is uh google you might have heard of them they have a search engine uh claims they were not aware at that moment you should stop reading this and just start laughing really hard mm-hmm. uh we're not aware of the hyde smith's lynching comments at the time they gave her a five thousand dollar donation and certainly would never have given money to her had they known about it uh again and as you said bing failed them <laughs> yeah, I guess they all use Bing, I, I, I or or Spider or yeah. Archie and Jughead, which yeah. used to be a thing. Veronica, um, also she was caught um, on camera. I'm sure it was a hidden camera talking about the virtues of voter suppression. Uh. Now the, those schools over there have liberals in them, and you know, may, and 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 we're trying to basically make sure they don't vote, and we think that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. these people are – she didn't shout her from the rooftops. This looked like a, a video that was shot sort of, you know, on the sly. Mm-hmm. But they have – this is how they win. Th- yeah. This is not a secret to anybody. The only people who don't know, who pretend not to know that this is how the Republican Party operates are the people who bring you the news every night of the Republican say, Party. Whose job it is to tell yeah. you what the Republican Party is. Yep. 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 Trump called for Florida to suspend its legally required recount and declare the Republican candidates for Senate and governor the winners. Without evidence, Rick Scott accused Bill Nelson of trying to commit fraud by trying to win this election. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I did like what Jonathan Alter had to say about keeping these protesters outside of vote counts off yeah. of television. They are not germane to the process of counting votes. No, and not. we allow mobs to determine how vote counts go. We allow protesters to determine how vote counting is going to go. We become a banana republic. And uh, Katie Tour just couldn't understand what he was saying <laughs> because, well, yeah. we have a live feed and we have a person down there and he's got protesters behind him we have to film him i mean we uh-huh. just do no you couldn't put ari melber in a studio or over across right. the street next to a tree or mm-hmm. anywhere else it has to be a protest behind you uh because that's good television again that is giving away the story that this is a puppet show and it's about making sure you keep watching because something possibly yeah. violent possibly shouty noisy uh vibrant moving is behind the reporter. Uh, Don't put these people on television. What is happening should be a uh, methodical, legally binding, boring, uh, boring, Boring. (laughs) a not television friendly process. And, you know, that is in a room. That is. And that is really the problem with elections these days Uh is there. Some of these states are not prepared to count uh, to have election results on election night. Right. They're just, the, and we could bring them up to speed. We there could. needs to be national election standards. Yes, and too. every yeah. machine uh, regulated, again, the government regulating how these votes are counted, determining this is how we do it. There's paper ballots, there's a paper trail, there's provisional ballots that can be determined, have been counted or not. And we could do all of that. Yeah. Uh, that means every vote is counted if we yes. get to that point. And that yes. is something that one political party does not want to see happen. No. So uh, I I think that is a priority. I think, uh, you know, Pelosi has said that's a priority. Uh, 
a lot of other Democrats have said that is a priority. When Democrats get in control, that is something, as I have said before, when Democrats control all three houses of, you know, the presidency, the Senate and the House, we have 18 months to get a whole lot of shit done. Right. Banking regulation, election regulation, yeah. hopefully gun, gun regulation and climate change. We've got 18 months and we got to just rush to do it. Speaking of the need for action, uh, yeah. Donald Trump blamed California's wildfires on poor forest management, despite the fact that nearly 60 percent of their forests are under federal management. He also threatened to cut off federal funds due to gross mismanagement. Yeah, he I, changed his mind about that. Yeah, but yeah. he shot his fucking mouth off because he can't he help did. himself because he's a giant, hateful asshole and he won't shut the fuck up. And that's what his voters love about him. Mm. And I, I agree with Lawrence O'Donnell. He said – "I." I I'm misquoting him now. I never thought I'd live to see the day of a president taking the side of a fire yeah, in a natural yeah. disaster. But, you know, yep. I, in my opinion, the fire's right. The fire's right. California's wrong. That fire is the biggest, best, greatest fire, and I would like to support it 100%. It's a beautiful fire, and it's doing what it does, you know? It's being natural. It's out there doing its thing. Government's trying to regulate it, tell it what to do, where to go. And you just know that that's the sort of, like, in that – in that rotting worm eaten brain mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. the most powerful man in the world. Those are the kind of thoughts that are whirling around there all day, all night steeped in diet Coke and bile. And mm-hmm. it's only going to get worse because there's a whole bunch of, 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 uh, of subpoenas that apparently are waiting out there mm-hmm. for uh, friends and family just in time for Christmas. Hey, what did I get in my stocking Don jr? Oh, that's not good. No. Yeah. <laughs> Is it no. four subpoenas or only five? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Trump blamed the stock market downturn on the prospect of presidential harassment by the Dems. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, now, and the same guy, this Donald Trump fellow who you've all heard a lot about, was involved in nearly every step of the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. And he may very well have violated campaign finance laws uh, in the process, which, you know, was because, of course, it was his money and it's one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So, of course, he was involved every step of the way. Uh Trump claimed that he did not discuss Robert Mueller's Russia probe with Matthew Whitaker before appointing him acting attorney general. And if you believe that, we've got a couple bridges to sell you. Uh, Trump defended Whitaker, calling him a highly respected man, but also said, I don't know, Matt Whitaker. Uh, Trump has been in more than a dozen meetings with Whitaker in the Oval Office. Yeah. Step one, uh, first hearing. This this one's easy. You haul Matt Whitaker up there if he hasn't quit already. Yeah. And say, how many meetings have you been in with Donald Trump? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what did you talk about? And no, you can't claim executive privilege because you didn't have executive privilege at the time. So let's hear what you talked about with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's time to and, – and these can be quick meetings because these sort of hearings are – Let's establish the fact on the record that Donald Trump lies all the time. Let's impeach the witness officially before he ever gets to the indictments phase so that we can just say, but you lied about this and you lied about this and you lied about this. It's on the record and here are the witnesses and here's everyone in your circle lies to protect you. So mm-hmm. having that going in to a knife fight, which is what's going to happen once the mm-hmm. Mueller report's released – is a very valuable thing. Apparently the Mueller team is not getting what they want from Paul Manafort. So Paul Manafort might have to go back to big boy jail for the rest of his life, which would be, you know, real sad, but I guess he fears the Russian mob more than he fears federal prison. So, okay. Also, there need to be some house interns putting together clips of every single time Matt Whitaker was on Fox news. Yeah. And we run that first before he testifies one word. Then we put him under oath and say, We've got it all on record. We played it for the record here. What you've said on Fox. Now let's talk. Now, would you like some good news? Go ahead sure. with a little bit of good news. Go right ahead. A federal judge blocked construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, saying that Donald Trump administration simply discarded and ignored inconvenient facts about how the project would impact climate change. Thank you. Somewhere in the federal judiciary, there's somebody who still cares about facts. And that right. just... That That's good to know. Yep. Representative Elijah Cummings, who is chairman, incoming chairman of the House Oversight Committee, says one of his first priorities when Congress returns will be to investigate why the Trump administration decided to add a question about citizenship to the 2020 census. Thank you. Uh, British Prime Minister Theresa May called Donald Trump 
on Air Force One to congratulate him on the midterms because at the time he was saying, this is a huge win. This is a huge win. Me personally, I did the whole thing. It's great. It's great for me. And apparently he just ripped her a new one because he yeah. hates everyone at this point. He's a he's a fucking pathetic loser and he's and he's lashing out at everyone around him. Yeah. Teresa Mays had a really bad day today, too. Yeah, yeah she uh, did. She had a real bad week. <laughs> she had a bad week. And uh, we're thinking about you, Andy. Andy is our uh, British correspondent. Yeah. And uh, he is a great guy. He's been with, been friend of the podcast for a long time, Andy. And uh, his, Andy's niece, I believe, was one of the very first internet kitties. She had kitties on her yeah. jammies when she was a baby. Now she's in, you know, sixth grade or middle school or wherever, whatever grade she's in now. She's a big girl. Uh, Anyway, Andy did tweet me today and say, you know, "Welcome to uh, <laughs> democracy." You know, this is this is this is turning into a disaster for her. Uh, Theresa May's uh, Brexit ministers have all resigned. They Brexit no one wants, No one owns Brexit anymore. Right. There's no, you know, it's an abandoned baby, and uh, it's it's bad for Theresa May because she's been in charge of trying to make the quote unquote will of the British people happen and it's not going well because no. it's a bad vote. All right. Uh, without evidence, Trump accused people, many people many who have people. absolutely no right to vote of changing their clothes in their car and returning to cast additional ballots in disguise. Yeah. Has he ever voted? No, I don't think, I think he's confusing. I, this I, with I really Hall- want to know that. Like I, he's confusing this with Halloween, I think. Halloween, where you yeah. change your clothes. <laughs> yeah. I know you. You were Spider Man five minutes ago. You bastard, get off my lawn, you bastard! And then he sticks the dogs on him because that's the kind of douchebag he is. No well, more peanut butter cups for you. No, this is this really is what happens when a rotten brain has no filter on it and yeah. just make it. And you can watch him in real time reverse engineer to the conclusion he wants. Just some crazy shit. Yeah. You know, I mean, I need this election to be illegitimate. Therefore, somehow some people must be getting millions of people must be voting illegally. Therefore, and it, it's just that mush in his skull. And that again, that mush in his skull is the same mush in 60 million Republican voters. They're all crazy Uncle Liberty at this point, And that's the problem. The problem is not the guy they elected. The problem is all the rest of them. Trump is considering firing John Kelly and Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen uh, but since he can't ask John Kelly to fire both of those people, he's having a hard time. Yeah, he decided uh, Donald Trump decided to embarrass us abroad again because that's always fun. Uh, he fucked up Veterans Day. His trip to France was a complete international disaster. Then he decided to blame his staff for not telling him how important it is to honor veterans. I thought, you know, I just sent a card, uh, something nice like, sorry, you're dead. I prefer soldiers who don't die. I prefer Jarch Dukes who don't get shot. Love, Donald. That kind of thing. <laughs> Trump also publicly blamed the Secret Service for his canceled visit to a World War I cemetery in France and mocked the French for needing the U.S. to rescue them from the Germans in both world wars. Uh, the French responded, by the way, by publish, publishing photographs on Twitter of their soldiers doing operations in the rain. Uh, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, this just happened today. Uh, and this caught my attention because it caught Charlie Pierce's attention because he thought mm-hmm. this is this is truly appalling even for these fuckers um the trump administration officials asked federal law enforcement agencies to examine legal ways of removing exiled turkish cleric uh fetul gulen from the united states in an attempt to persuade turkish president ergodon to ease pressure on saudi government four sources say this wow apparently the first lady is in charge now of firing national security agency staff uh, because she was able to do that this week. Yeah, I want them gone. And, and here's a headline from our paper, because here's a little local news. Uh, the headline in our Tuesday paper was, and this is the actual headline, the one headline. above the fold front page, some fear for state GOP's future, to which I say, duh. Da, da, da. Yeah. It's true. So, uh, the state GOP is going the way of California's GOP. So... And you know there are no Republican House members in Orange County anymore now. Oh no, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Oh. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Diva. 
that's a perfect name for an internet kitty. Yes. Uh, visit Diva. And of course, if you are so inclined, you may worship Diva <laughs> at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. How about everybody write us this week at proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you're grateful for this year. Yeah, uh, we're gonna, we're, we, well, we need content. Show. We need content for our thing. We usually do a letter show on Thanksgiving, and we haven't with the election. We just haven't sort of put ourselves together on that. But if you would like to write us, we will we will put some letters together next week. Don't don't force me to fake up a bunch of letters like we did last <laughs> you year. Won't do that. No. <laughs> don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal address information, GoFundMe, and Patreon information. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. I'm not going to say Facebook anymore because Facebook sucks, but we are on Facebook. We love our Facebook fans, and uh, we'll continue to post the podcast there anyway. Thank you for sharing our show. We really do appreciate, and it's it's a it tickles me to see it uh, when people are sharing our show on social media. Thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties just changed hats again, and they're ready to vote. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.